Yeah, don't anybody get me wrong. I I hate the city. I just <laughs> hate it. The psychological pressures, like you were talking about, they hit me hard. I am not. I don't do well in this city. It it eats away at my soul. I can't but, do it either. Um, right, but I I have to uh, mostly on behalf of others make some kind of uh, you know carve out some kind of ideas. Because I realize that there's a lot of people living in a city in the cities, and that there has to be something that they can do, aside from like, well, you might you might want to move out of the city, you know. So, penguin, that was a great idea. Gorilla gardening is a, a potential strategy for um, for a lot of city dwellers. You know, if it's not empty lots, there's lots of parks that you could put a lot of edible plants in. I know, I've done it. Um, if you want to ask me how, because I'll show you exactly how to, and I'll tell you exactly how to do it. Um, not that I would ever suggest anybody do anything illegal, but um, the other thing is um, there is a, a bustling gray, uh, underground economy in a lot of cities, and a lot of people are working under the table. And I think you're right. I think financial independence would be your first route. Um, but I think that's very easy. That's something that can be done in a city pretty easily. Um, you can have lots of different, um, you know, I always, I always get that picture in my head of the, the guy from the hood doing a, a hair cutting business out of his car. He just mm -hmm. drives from house to house to house, cuts people's hair. Awesome. I've seen like, so, yeah. There's, there's, there's a lot of opportunities for sort of underground, um, entrepreneurial, uh, ventures in in the city just because you have a lot of people you got a lot of customer base um and that doesn't have to be you know black market it could be easily be gray market like you said growing mushrooms in your closet like uh, the possibilities are kind of endless i think there's um i think there's a lot that can be done i, I don't want to write off the city entirely i think there's a lot that can be done um and i've just i've named a few just kind of off the top of my head um but like I said, the eighty percent of people live in cities. So I mean, if we're if we have, um, um, yeah, I, I think there's a lot of potential there that we haven't. Maybe we haven't that, thought that of. Came to know. mind uh, was something that Rayo brought up, and it may not necessarily be a great idea, but I think I'll mention it in passing. Some folks do really well at it and they enjoy it. Um, but then again, I've also heard people who have had you know their their mean time to harassment, their the amount of time, or I guess the frequency of interactions with coercers is actually pretty high um but the van nomadism with city squat spots um so that i mean that's another thing um if uh, uh if you bring down you know speaking in financial independence terms again um if you bring down um if you bring down how much you need to live on you don't need to make as much and um then it uh, then i think the mobility helps you too if you can always leave um, but then again, a lot of people don't want to don't want to to, to, to have that uh, that don't want to do the, the mobile lifestyles. But I figure I'd mention it in passing because it was something that we talked about a lot um, back in the day. That might be a, a great um, solution to a lot of the people that I was talking about before. They're sort of stuck in the city, living paycheck mm -hmm. to paycheck. Everything's very expensive, and, and that's and that is a, that's one of the cheapest to... ways. Yeah, I mean, and, and people are forced out into yes. their cars, right? So. Um, I mean, and, and I mean, you, yeah, again, the only limitations are, are your imagination. Um, and, and yeah, it's, it's some people don't, some people don't like it. And again, sometimes the frequency of interaction with coercers is, is higher. If again, people call, call the cops on you cause you have a sketchy, so-called so sketchy van and, and, you know, parked on the street or something like that. But, uh, then again, I've, I've also, I've, people have had a lot of success with it. So, um, I don't write that off either. Um, I definitely don't just. Um, it's, it's as with anything, the, the, the more you do it, the better you'll be at it. And, uh, then again, there's so much information out there on van nomadism and even, even more from, I guess, uh, people who wouldn't be agoras or, uh, or wouldn't be, I guess where we are, um, as far as we are, um, they, they still, um, yeah, it still, still works, still works for them and they, they, they see a lot of advantage to it. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's an option. That might even be a good yeah, that's that almost sounds like a good starting point for somebody like I said who was in a very uh, tight spot financially. Even if you had to do it temporarily, like if you yeah. are worried about coming tyranny and you're you're concerned about the location you're in, but you're stuck due to finances. You know, you're you don't you barely make enough to pay your bills. Everything's so expensive in the city. Um, go. I, be, make the intentional choice to go live in your vehicle for a while, move around as much as possible, go listen to the, the Vanu podcasts, 
and um, get you know then you can save a bunch of money because you know living in your car is costing you hardly anything at all in comparison to rent in a city um, mm-hmm. and then you could stack a decent amount of um, money to where you now you have more options of as w- to what path you want to take after that so I think that's mm-hmm. a uh, that's probably uh, one of the better op- solutions, honestly, um, would be to go nomadic. Like, like yeah, the, the cops are going to hassle you, I, I think, more than they would in other areas. But, um, you know, that's kind of the chance you have to take and you maybe have to be a little smart about it. But mm-hmm. um, you will save uh, that. That is the way out. That's an easy yeah, yeah, way out. Yeah, if you're, if you're looking and that's who's yes. Talking. Yeah, if, if you're looking for your way at way out, whether it's out of the city or whether it's out of the first realm entirely, um, then I mean that's it's the that's the best it's 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 one of the best transitionary lifestyles. Um, and as Rayo said, it's not a panacea. There are problems with it. Um, that's why he stopped. He's he the vein nomadism was not enough freedom for him, so he went and lived in a tent in the middle 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 of the Siskiyou National Forest. So and Bella Coola, British Columbia, traveled around. Wasn't in one location, but. Um, but yeah, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not the end all be all and you don't have to view it as that. But, um, yeah, as sex said, um, if you're paying a thousand dollars a month rent in the city and you've got a car you can go live in, and if you go live in that car for three months, you can stack, you know, five grand or something like that. I don't know. Like it might be worth, um, you know, it might be worth, uh, it might certainly be worth doing. Um, especially with, with, yeah, it might might be worth doing. I mean, if you could come up, come into it with a little bit of capital, and, um, you know, you have to have a vehicle anyway. If the circumstances kind of align, I think getting a nondescript type of, you know, commercial style van, diesel diesel uh, van, or I might actually want a gas powered van in this case, but, you know, just you, just a white van that that can, could be, it could be a plumber, electrician, any, any sort of, um, any sort of service, nondescript, uh, keep it, yeah, keep, you know, clean and in good order, mm-hmm. really try to basically keep it impeccable. So you, you draw as little, it's the most common type of thing you see on the road. You draw as, as little of attention to itself as it can. And if you're able to blend in and you'd blend in so much easier in, in that urban setting where like, for example, a street over for me is a ton of different, it's like a light industrial type of area. Although it's kind of turning into uh, you know, a microbrewery and little hip restaurants and stuff like that. But um, it's, it's still like we're right, uh, stone throw from where I am is still very much, you know, mechanic shops and little lots where people have tractors and, and some vehicles, parks and stuff like that. I mean, very much light industrial. Like you could park a van up on any of these streets and it would be the most um, un, unremarkable thing. Uh, unremarkable thing and then there's a uh, you know you gotta keep, have it insulated you gotta have a uh, few technical things uh, worked out that i think i think there's people that, that have kind of pioneered this that can pretty much trans you can get that knowledge transferred you pretty efficiently so you don't have to trial and error yourself um i i, I think that'd be the the route to go um you you, you want to basically blend a blend in as much as possible and b you know just have as many of the uh Comforts for as, as little as uh, you know, little expenditure as possible, little as little cash outflows as possible, and you don't have the option of like living off of you. You don't have the option of producing much, um, so you're really trying to minimize your your cost there. And uh, really, when you think about the the the, the amount, or the way rents are going in the cities, I mean, when, you, when you're doing the numbers, I, I think that that you can save quite a bit. Once, once you make that initial investment, because rents are only going up, and they are, they are very, very high in a lot of these places, and they're only going up. I know you said a thousand dollars a month. That's like cheap in a lot of cities. Like yeah. sixteen, eighteen, two grand a month for a crappy apartment in a lot of cities. I, yeah, I think I, we're on something like, here. Yeah, yeah. I'll, um. I think we're on to something here. If you, I'm just kind of playing this out in my head. So if you could couple all of the things we said together. So you get out of your crappy apartment that you're paying too much for. You die, um, you move into uh, a van like Penguin Sec, make it, make it look like a work van. So you kind of blend into um, you're just any other plumber or electrician in the area. You diversify your income. And then you couple that with... Um, 
you know, knowing some people in the area, maybe uh, doing some community gardening or that sort of thing, doing some gorilla gardening in the in the forest, so you always have a source of food around. Uh, maybe you fig figure out some a place to hide some water collection and that sort of thing, just so you can, mm -hmm. you know, kind of have your food and water. And if you couple all these things together, it's kind of starting to come together for me to where this could be a really, you could be pretty well off um, by doing all of these things at once. You know, I could see this as almost like a lifestyle. And if you got a couple of, you know, underground um, um, side hustles or sources of income, um, that sort of thing, wh whatever that is, uh, depends on whatever you're good at. But um, I, I could see this being uh, a reasonable strategy, we'll say. Maybe not, still not as good as moving out to the country in the homestead, but much better than, say, living in an apartment and living paycheck to paycheck. So... I think we solved the problem here. <laughs> <laughs> it's, cer it's certainly a solution. Uh, certainly a solution. Um, right. Our strategy for liberty is the creation of a culture of liberty, a society that occupies its own protected space and implements independent systems of cooperation. We need to create a second realm. Device connection terminated.